you know, it's been incredible to watch just the growth of what's been happening in country music. It's been incredible to watch how it's expanding, and it's so much fun when you get to see some of your stars offer up their music as well. So we're gonna dive in and talk to two of them. I think Wes might be on the way, but I'm gonna give them a proper introduction. And you know what? Y'all been sitting here waiting, so I want you to be like really loud, like this is WWE style when I bring them in, and you're like, wow! Okay, ready? Here we go. Are you ready back there? Here we go. Big, big intro. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. You know him from the ABC hit series, Mistresses, the Sundance cult classic, John Dies in the End. But listen, he has been busy writing music. 2019 and 2020, he had songs coming out, including Road With No Lines. He has won all kinds of songwriting awards, which just impressed me to no end because songwriting is incredibly hard. I've tried it and I'm not good at it. He also has a debut single, Closer, that is out. Spotify editorial list, and these are super hard to get on, y'all. I speak from a country music journalist standpoint, so I know if you make it on one of these lists, you're doing something right. From Fresh Finds Country, also New Music Nashville, and Breakout Country, those are all Spotify lists. Look them up later, listen to them, you will love them. But right now, he is a part of iHeart's Make It Up As We Go scripted podcast series, which sounds fascinating. My friends Nicole Gallion and Bobby Bones are a part of it, as well as Dennis Quaid and some guy named Billy Bob Thornton. It's going to be fantastic. I know you guys are going to love it. Please put your hands together for Rob May! <laughs> Come on down! You're the next contestant! Wow. You can choose whatever seat that you would like, Rob. Except for that one. No, I'm just kidding. You can sit wherever you want. Okay. Get ready, friends and family, for our next panelist on The Price is Right. He was born in Alberta, Canada, so you know he's nice. Those Canadians, they're always the nicest. He defines his life by four essential qualities, fatherhood, fitness, faith, and family. And you might know him from his roles on When Calls the Heart, Dr. Carson Shepard. No, I don't have the answers that you're looking for. I know what you want to ask me, and I don't know. <laughs> also, his favorite hallmarks, my favorite hallmarks, too. My favorite wedding, a Christmas detour, anything for love. Y'all, I don't know if you've seen this in his bio. Some of you probably know. They refer to him as the Cary Grant of Hallmark movies. But here's what I love. He loves music, and he has music out now. He's also doing a concert tomorrow night. If you're interested, I can tell you more about that coming up. But I want you to put your hands together right now for Mr. Paul Green! <laughs> Hello! Welcome! Okay, so we are going to get started. If Wes chooses to join us, guys, when he comes in, let's play a prank on him. If he comes in late, I want everybody to go, hey, Wes, real loud, just to make him feel weird. And then we'll love on him a little bit. But that's what we do. We love each other. So welcome. You guys doing okay? You got Does eyes? anyone have eyes on Wes? Eyes on Wes? Me too. I was talking to him earlier. Is Where he, he a Jenny, to? Jenny's ice cream? It could be. <laughs> okay. Is he supposed to be on this panel with us? He is, but he'll come in. All right. We'll find him. He's on his way. So when he gets in here, I'll save all the hard questions for him. Guys, how you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. You're here. Yeah, it's so, it's so freezing inside and it's so hot outside. Right, I know. Are you guys hot in here? Oh, you're hot. <laughs> okay, I find it, yeah, outside. There we go. Okay, we're getting saucy already, y'all. It's early. It's not even five o'clock, but okay. So I want to dive in because, listen, the whole reason I'm even here is because I love music and, and I love the fact that you guys both love music as well. And I've had the pleasure of talking to Mr. Paul about his love and how it got started. But I want to talk to you, Rob. When, when did you really decide, like, music was a big passion of yours? When did it hit you? Hmm. Man, you know, I've been, I remember I came home from, <clears throat> from, from school, was it school or preschool or daycare? I don't even know. What do you do when you're five years old? Kindergarten. Um, kindergarten, <laughs> getting into trouble. And uh, I came home, my dad said, he goes, you know, run around the house and uh, we, we got you something. And I, for whatever reason, I thought it was going to be small. 
and like hidden in like a, a, a fake plant in the house somewhere in a corner. And I couldn't find it. And then he's like, what do you mean, man? Like, look, this is a, a piano we got you. And I was five years old, and they got me this beautiful, upright, kawaii piano. And uh, I think ever, I mean, from the moment that I started playing it, like it was, it was a way to express myself and kind of take what I was feeling, uh, for better or worse, and, and, and you know, put it into to music. Um, you know, it's, it's its own language in itself. You know, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Who's there in the wings? I, I feel like I see somebody. Is Guys. Hey, Wes. Thanks for coming. Just kidding. <laughs> what I miss? Gonna, listen, we're going to pretend that he's not sitting there, and I'm going to say nice things about him. Wes Brown, raised in Louisiana, no stranger to the South, everybody. You've seen him on We Are Marshall, Glory Road, and Call of the Wild. He starred in nine Hallmark, Hallmark Channel films, including Love's Everlasting Courage, Love Begins, and 2011 Christmas Cookies. The most delicious Hallmark movie ever. I feel and like a total he was also story. <laughs> Christmas at Graceland and got to sing with Kelly Pickler. Wes is here, everybody. He made it to the yeah. panel. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. I, mix, I missed the text to get here, sorry. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Well, you know what? I just asked the question, and we're going to skip over Paul, and I'm going to jump right to you since you were late to class. Then you get oh. to answer the next question. When did you really decide that music was going to be something that played a part in your life? I mean, I, I saw an interview where you said you never thought you would get to do it on camera with the same level that you've been able to. That's very true. I never thought I'd be able to do that. Um, I was just like a lot of other people, just playing, and... Uh, we were in college and we started a band and uh, the truth, the absolute truth is we, we accidentally started playing more and our shows got bigger and we started to tour and I never thought that would happen either. Uh, so when that um, fizzled out as a lot of bands do, um, got to start playing in a, a couple films which again never thought that would happen uh, and then I just kind of took a shot one time and went and recorded some stuff. and. Um, it's working out. I'm still kind of crossing my fingers. It continues to work out, you know. <laughs> what was the band name? Was it something terrible? Uh, I was, well, I played in a few. I played in a blues band called The Back Porch, and then our rock band was called Anomaly. Okay, those are not bad. I was hoping for, like, you always have those garage band names when you're young that were not great. Okay, well, I, when I was the first person to leave the band. The band name changed to Battle Alaska. <laughs> So you got I, got, out. I got out. I got out at the right time. You got out under the wire for sure. <laughs> okay, Paul. I know music has always been a part of your life, but when did you decide that you wanted it to be a bigger part of your life? I did a really big concert in New York, and and I had, there's a big choir, and there was a hundred part symphony and two hundred choir, and I got to sing Hallelujah, and it was such a spiritual experience. That I literally got off stage, and I was like. And I grew up playing and was, t uh, but in recorded little albums here and there. But this experience on a big stage with a huge audience and a huge thing, when I, I just said, I, that's it. I have to write an album. So I, I, I wrote an album and got it out in three months, and I was just really ambitious and excited about it. And then that album got to play at the Troubadour and at Hotel Cafe in in L.A. and uh, and that that kind of rebooted. And then the pandemic really, because I got to play almost 300 shows in the last 19 months or 18 months uh, between Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And just to meet, you know, so many people were stuck at home, especially through the, the heat of it. And I got so many stories of people going like, I can't leave the house, so your music's been this to me, or meant help me reconnect to this. And it was like, so really it's uh, that, that schedule I had of three times a week performing so many shows really lit my fire and my love for it. You know, it's interesting you said that your music, when you were hearing the feedback of how it was making people feel, I wanna know the first song that you can remember that had an impact on you in that way. Like were you growing up and you heard something and it moved you to a point where you remember everything about it. It's crystal clear in your mind. For me, it's Reba Fancy, but you know, that's a different story. So, like, if there's if there's something that you remember hearing and it really is sparking that memory. It's probably the theme to Chariots of Fire because cause it's, like, the first film I saw and the music was so moving and I just remember, I don't even, I think it's the first time I saw, like, on a big screen and, and I, you know, that ripped me apart, that, that, dun, 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 right? And just make sure. Don't stop, bro. Keep okay. going. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into a beatbox. 
But then that one-eyed, one-horn, flying purple people eater song, it impacted me so much because I was so confused. And I was like five years old and my dad was ripping it in the shop while he's welding and I'm seeing sparks fly and I'm hearing one-eyed, one-horn, flying purple people eater. We wear short shorts. I'm like, what is this song about? It's like I had an existential crisis at five years old. It's like, why is that man that I respect playing this purple people eater song? I don't know. That's those two songs, bro. I love it. All right, Wes, what were your songs? <sighs> Growing up where I did, uh, I grew up in Baton Rouge and all my family was in the New Orleans area. So um, just that, that New Orleans style, Delta Blues, jazz. Um, I'm a huge uh, Rat Pack fan with Sammy Davis, Sinatra. And then one of the guys that really got me going, I still haven't met him yet, um, is uh, Harry Connick Jr. Oh, yeah. Just uh, guys that are doing, uh, they're both actors and musicians. Those are the ones who really inspire me to uh, keep going. And um, that's kind of why I picked the genre that I did. That, you know, it's, uh, I don't see a lot of younger guys doing jazz and blues. Maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. But um, you should play him I'm in gonna his keep biopic, going. dude. Yeah. You should play Harry Connick. Yeah. Right? I would love to. Yes. Uh, I have to get his permission, though. <laughs> but yeah, so no, it's, it's, it's the guys that are coming from New Orleans that are kind of doing both, and uh, that's kind of what I've always gravitated towards. I love it. Okay, Rob, you're up. Baby Shark. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to have that stuck in my head. Thanks, Rob. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, now it's going to be stuck in everybody's heads. You are welcome. <laughs> what were your parents listening to when you were growing up? I always find that fascinating to hear, like, what was going on when you were little, even before you had a choice to listen to it, what was playing in the house? My dad played a lot of jazz, too. A lot of jazz. And my dad was in a, a jazz band. Oh, okay. He played drums and still does to some extent. Um, but yeah, a lot of like Stan Getz and uh, Gio Gilberto and like, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff. Um, trying to think who else. Uh, yeah, like Brazilian jazz and Cuban jazz, and um, that was like a really big influence uh, as a child. I love that. I would not have expected that, so that's pretty cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, I do want to know what music offers you that you can't get from acting, because I do feel like in knowing so many people in the music industry, they're super creative, and it is an outlet for them. So what does music offer you that you don't get filled up from in acting? I mean, I think there's something to be said for, you know, three and a half minutes. Like, it's just long enough and it's just short enough. And, you know, you can sit down and, and write a song by yourself or you can, you can collaborate and co-write with other people and then, you know, their input and your input shape shifts, you know, what you're creating and then you create something together. Um, but it can be like this solo thing, but it can also be super collaborative. And the fact that like you're setting it to music, like to actual, you know, melodies and chords, like there's just something, it's, it's a different language. Um, and it's really special. And I think for me, what's so weird too, like doing both now, you know, do, doing movies and TV and then also playing music, like it's a totally different part of my brain, it feels. Like, when I'm open, like, on set, maybe you guys can speak to this, too, and I don't want to derail you, but I just thought it just occurred to me. You know, it's like, <clears throat> when you're on set, you're very focused, and then you're in the moment, you know, you're doing the scene, back and forth, cut, 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 action, action, you keep doing it a million times. But, like, with music, it's almost like a different kind of spatial awareness and usage of your brain. If that makes any sense, maybe I'm just, I don't know. But it, it's, it's a different... Um, almost a different existence. So it's kind of cool going back and forth, mm. uh, being present musically and being present you know, yeah. in front of camera. And they're both so similar because they last forever, which is interesting. Like once you create a piece of music, someone's gonna be listening to that thing a couple hundred years from now in some medium. But you can listen to, mu you can listen to music with your eyes closed and you can't watch a film with your eyes closed. So you can really touch, like, this is just what's different. My mom does that all the time. I'm like, you still, are you sleeping? She goes, no, I'm watching with my eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure my mom slept through movies I've been in, for sure. Listening. I'm just listening to it. But performing is, you know, it's, it feels like you're in control with music, whereas with, it's so collaborative with acting, unless you're doing a one-man show. But there's, it feels like with acting, there's so many pieces in telling the story. 
And when you're writing a song, you're telling a story from different points of view, but when you're creating a film, there's so many piece, people and pieces and parts where, like you said, with a guitar, you could just go sit in the back of a, of a by a creek or something and, and have a moment that is trans, transformative and transformative. Yeah, and I think not to, not to minimize, you know, film and TV, but for me, it's, it's a more planar kind of existence and where you're operating from, you know? But with music, it feels like it's like 3D chess, like it's more 3D, it's more dimensional because you have that element of, of you're right, I think sound and, and melody and chords and this beautiful integration of, of lyric and, and all those things. Yeah, it's a really you know? great question. It really makes your, the thinker turn on. All right, Wes, chime in here. Well, I mean, these guys covered it. Uh, I would just say to add on what they said, with music, especially if you're the songwriter or the player, you have complete creative control with films. We control almost nothing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Sometimes even our performances, uh, those get changed through directing, editing. So uh, with songwriting, yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you like the song, I'll be happy to accept the compliment. If you don't like it, well, that's my fault. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's my big hurdle. And it's like, to, to Rob's point too, it's almost a little scary with music because you got three minutes to get it right. Yeah. Not 87 or whatever uh, the movies are, but um, yeah. What well, music did you grow up with? My dad was a huge uh, Stevie Wonder and Bonnie Raitt fan. Oh, so, Bonnie uh, Raitt. But I, I can't lie, I didn't grow up with the record player going all the days. Uh, I, I can't say that my parents were huge music uh, fans, but th that yeah, but that's what they geared towards, that Stevie Wonder style. And I remember he loved him some Bonnie Raitt, so. Me too. She's incredible. Well, and, you know, I do wonder, too, when you think about it, you, you said this, Paul, that you, you only have so much time. You only have so much time to get it right. But there is this imperfection in music that almost those little imperfections, your voice cracks or something happens, and it's just, it makes it real. And that's kind of what I love about a live performance is the imperfection. Yeah. And it's not doing the lines over and over and over again and getting them perfect. Yeah. So I wonder if that's, that's part of what you're drawn to. Well, I'll say this real quick. Um, to touch on that, uh, I'm currently writing a musical with two guys. One's name is Chase Ramsey. He's going on year three Book of Mormon and also Bo Black, who's a head songwriter for Disney. And the main focus that Bo wants to work on is he does not want this to be perfect because he's in the space where everything has to just be completely on pitch and there's no mess ups. He's like, I want there to be mess ups because it's gonna make the film more realistic so the music needs to match the movie. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. So. In, in taking that and jumping onto another plane, what do you feel is the best representation of who you are as a person right now? Do you have a song that you already have out or one that you're working on that when you perform it, you feel like this is really me, and this is what I want people to see of me. You wanna go? Yeah, I mean, I do. I, do. Um, I got a song that I wrote uh, called Regular Guy, and um, I think it sums it up pretty well. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. it's like, at the end of the day, I mean, <laughs> we're all human beings, right? You know? <clears throat> and. I was just, I've, been, I've been getting back into golf like in a big way and it's kind of been my, my soulless and my zen and it still allows me to like focus but kind of in a, a very chill way yeah, for the most part if <laughs> I'm playing well. <laughs> but you know, and I was watching Tiger Woods master class the other day and they're like, you know, these questions he always gets, he's like, you know, do you get nervous? And he's like, are you kidding me? He goes, I'm nervous constantly. He's like, I'm nervous from the, the first tee shot to the last putt. He goes, I'm nervous constantly. He goes, the, 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 it, it's more a matter of what do you do with those nerves? And he's like, and I put that into my focus. I put that into like, you know, his, into his game. And, you know, I feel like that's how I feel, you know? Cause like, I, I feel anxiety, you know? I feel heightened senses of things and nervousness and all this stuff. But uh, I think it's admitting that and, and accepting that and then living in the moment with that feeling. Cause we all have that. Yeah. I'm Unless nervous you're a right now. Unless you're or something, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm really nervous right now. Sit next to Paul Green. <laughs> <laughs> he just touched me. 
you got a little Paul Green on you right on the side right there. So <laughs> don't wipe it off. It looks good. It looks good. Paul, I know that you've been working on a lot of things, and, and there are so many of your fans that are here that we're talking about just being in quarantine and being able to offer that music to people <laughs> during a really dark period and helping them lift up and, and have something to look forward to. What did that do for you? I know what it did for them. What did it do for you? I mean, it completely rebooted my, I mean, I was also doing a couple vocal lessons per week. So I was singing so many hours a week and playing my guitar that just showing up, putting myself in the flow, inspiration came and I just kept writing. And just by, just by being, having my guitar in my hand so much and having a desire to make a difference to people's like trapped feelings gave me quite a bit of uh, the, the feeling of that my that I was being a contribution and that gives that just gives a lot of fulfillment back and it was so direct in real time because I'm reading compliments or comments and what what people have been through and someone will just say you know I've been locked at home for nine months and I look forward to your Friday concerts or whatever and it just I don't know it's a momentum thing it's like a, a you know there's there's a there's sometimes people get into a destructive pattern where they keep making uh, bad choices, but it kind of feels good and they just keep going. This is like the opposite of that. Like it's like a upward spiral of that felt good, so I'm just gonna do more of it. So that felt even better. And I'm just gonna go deeper and deeper. And it was just this like the opposite of, I guess, uh, destructive. Uh, it was just a really positive experience. And, uh, and I didn't know I loved music as much as I love music. Like it showed me how, because I'm just sitting there with myself, really, talking to myself, literally. Sometimes <laughs> I think my, I think my longest concert was three hours and thirty minutes. And and who was on that concert? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> wow. And that wasn't the one in the bathroom. There was one wow. in the bathroom. That I heard was, about that yeah, one. Yeah, you yeah. were like, I'll be right back. I, I gotta I go. I couldn't find a good acoustic place. I ended up in the bathroom and <laughs> I think my shirt was off or something. But all that, all that aside, just, just cons uh, consistently showing up for others and for myself, I don't know, I just learned so much about yeah. myself and I just l learned you know, how to do the same song that I've done of my own. 50 different ways like I'll, I'd play my original songs never the same like almost never yeah. I'd make a loop and the dr the beat would take me somewhere weird and I'd be like oh why am I singing like like this but it was just freaking fun and I was and it taught me how good it is to make mistakes and fail without fear because I wouldn't it's not always perfect but I would like because they would request weird songs that I had never ever heard and I'd look it up on YouTube and I'd like hear it and I'd be like look up the guitar tabs and I'd be like, I'm gonna do my version of that. But uh, yeah, just learning, not being afraid to make a fool of myself in like with something very vulnerable, which is singing. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot. I love that. Wes, I gotta ask you, more nerve wracking to perform live singing or going in off script with a co-star? Say the first one again. Singing live. Okay or performing off script, like they just say, mm -hmm. this one's for you, you just roll with it. It's you and someone else. You go with the second one. I don't have a reason. Really? I was going with the second one. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You mean just completely off script yeah, and riff? Yeah, you're just, just a riffing. Kind of like what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right it's now. It's so much fun. It's jazz. Oh, and song? Oh no, that's ridiculous, first one. <laughs> I yeah. was like, and I'm changing my mind immediately. Sorry, I was late today, so. <laughs> Is there, is there something that you've done that you feel you are most proud of right now? Um, boy. You mean uh, m musically right now, or? Well, wide, wide open, whatever you're most proud of. <sighs> oh, gosh. My head's going down a rabbit hole right now. Uh, you know what, uh, it has nothing to do with music. What I'm most proud of right now is, um, uh, one of the reasons I was late is my wife had called me to know that we had uh, uh, we had closed a house on a school district that my daughter was dying for. Yay! And that happened like 60 seconds ago. So thank you very much. I appreciate Fantastic. that. Uh, so, you know, my, uh, 
my world revolves around my family, so like that's that would be the thing I'm most proud of right now. And then the fact that I get to do this uh, with all the fans and music and movies, and that provides for them, it's yeah. like a perfect circle. So. Now I know you said dream collaboration would probably be with Harry Connick, but is there a dream role out there for you? Yeah, and play, I'm asking you Harry guys Connick. this too, so <laughs> get ready. Uh, Oh man, I've got so many. I, I I really love period pieces. So okay. to get something, we we've done a few movies. Uh, in fact, it all started with like the the love series with with Hallmark Channel. Those were all set in the 1800s. So period pieces are, are something that I've always uh, really loved. Um, anything like New York 60s, you know, a little Godfather esque. Uh, that would be super fun. And to be honest, get back on a series because don't we love series? So. Yeah. <laughs> is it the nine to five? It's like the predictability of being on a series. Is that what you like the most about it? Uh, well, there's just uh, being on a series. It's well, one. It's just you know, it's a big giant blanket of security. Um, but you get to ke stay with a character for a really long time, and for that to roll over and continue it. Um, these the films we do at Hallmark are super fun, but you know we're done with these in three weeks. So you got to say goodbye to your character, your cast, your crew. Um, to so to stick with a f and. I will say this, when people are like, when you see actors being interviewed on um, talk shows and stuff and they talk about how much they care about their cast and crew, I don't know what it is with film, but it, it becomes real. You become really close with people in not a long time, so you don't really see that go. So yeah. to, to, to roll with that is a really nice thing. Okay, yeah, I can understand. It is that fast and furious and then it's all over with. And then it's gone. Ugh. All right, and dream then you're roll. Unemployed. Paul Green, dream roll. What is it? Half hour comedy that where I can make people laugh and play music somehow in LA or very close to where my family is, wherever that city is. Uh, but it's it's and I get something that uh, also makes a difference in some way. So it's a comedy, but there's music involved. Get to be close to my family. And, and make people laugh, and it actually, uh, so I, it's something I probably have to create, uh, right? But, it's, but uh, I wanna do a half hour, I love the schedule of a half hour comedy. It's very, it's very family friendly. Uh, the dramas can take eight days to shoot an episode, where sometimes half hours are three days, three and a half. And, it's, and I love comedy and love laughing and being playful. So to, to be able to, do my music and be at home and make people laugh and make a difference, that's kind of the, the four pillars that would make it work. But you strike me as such a serious guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just described whose line is it anyway with a charitable component at some point, right? No, 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 not like whose line is it, like, not improv. <laughs> not improv. You'd be great at improv. Yeah, isn't whose line is it anyway improv? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. no, 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 I, want, I mean like a, Something that would be on CBS and like, you know, the, what's the nerd one where they're, uh, The Big Bang Theory. Oh, that, scripted. The Big okay. Bang Theory oh, with music. For scri scripted. With music. Exactly. Where people are nerding out about music. Want to be in it? I like it. Want to be in it? If anybody's listening I just and wants got to cast. finance yeah. this, <laughs> just got cast. I got a house. I got a school district. I get to be in Paul's new musical. Three guys. Nosy three. reporter right over here. Just going to call it. It's perfect. Three, three men that are trying to be actors <laughs> and musicians at the same time. And all the comedic crap that happens to them as they're trying to buy houses and <laughs> buy motorcycles. You want to buy more motorcycles? This <laughs> is it's, perfect. It's writing itself yeah. in this front of you. It's way. writing itself. This is So perfect. write to CBS, everyone, <laughs> yeah. and let them know you want to see this untitled show. It's perfect. Show. It's perfect. Okay, Rob, dream roll. What would it be? We're dreaming big right now. We're putting it into the universe. So speaking into truth, brother, what do you want? Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I just want to work. You know, I just love to work. And yeah, it's nice to be selective and, and, uh, and all that stuff. But I want to work. And also, you know, like for me, a big, a big part of the music that I make and uh, if I have any say in it, the projects that I'm able to do and that I'm lucky or fortunate to do on TV or film is to raise the, the consciousness, you know, um, like, I'm sure those Saw movies and Hostel movies make a ton of money, but like, for me, it's like, that's not the, the, the message that I want to put out into the world. Um, I don't think those movies make us better people. Um, maybe they do, I don't know, I haven't really d delved into them, but it just seems a little, uh, you know, gratuitous. For me, it's all about message and, and, and having uh, hope and redemption, um, that sort of stuff. 
I like that. Um, we have a few more minutes that we'll ask a couple more questions and then we'll let you guys go. But I do want to say, you know, one of the things I think came up, somebody mentioned state of flow. And I'm really into that right now. Like what gets you in that state of flow? And for me, state of flow is when you're doing something and you love it so much that you've just completely lost track of what time it is. It's one of those where you look up and you're like, I haven't eaten in four hours. So what is it that you do that puts you in that state of flow? Is it songwriting? Is it acting? Is it hanging out with family? Like, what are those things that bring you so much joy that time actually slows down? For me, it's live performing because I seriously have looked down at my YouTube and, and it says two hours and 28 minutes and I'm like, how is that possible? And I, <laughs> and I make jokes all the time. I'm like, we're almost at an hour. But it's already, I'd like to, and I just, I, song after song and request after request and, and especially when you use a looping pedal, you can yeah. kind of create one beat and just play like 10 songs on that kind of rhythm and, and definitely live performing. And I'm hoping to get into flow state tomorrow at the concert here too. All right. Yeah. Get ready. All right, Wes, you want to jump in there? <laughs> My most honest answer is get in the kitchen and cooking for me really yeah um that, that's being from new orleans area that's kind of my jam I, I i love songwriting stuff but uh w that's what gets me going is get in the kitchen yeah. making meals that um i can't stand like the 30 minute meals that's super quick no i like meals that take hours to prepare okay hours to cook super complicated that's just my jam, and I love it. Really? What's your go-to recipe if everybody's coming over and they're gonna have like a big party at your house? It's 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 my gumbo. And if Bobby Flavor sees this, I challenge you to a gumbo right. cook-off. <laughs> yeah, gumbo, but gumbo is my go-to. Anything Cajun, I like Italian too. But yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a. We got to write that into this this forthcoming yeah. CBS for series. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I love the kitchen too. We get to like it's a lot of conflict. I like it. A lot of conflict. And you could do the catering, too. We could even save money in the production. <laughs> craft, <laughs> we would be, I, I, craft services right I, here. <laughs> I've actually done it. One of the first movies I did, I, I'm not going to tell you the name because I don't think it ever made it to the light of day. Thank goodness. It was a horror movie, and I was half the caterer on that. We were shooting in Louisiana. <laughs> I made a jambalaya one week that lasted two days for cast and crew, another gumbo. I don't think I got paid for that either, so, Yeah. <laughs> But it was fun. It built character. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Last but not least, tell me. What's what was the question? Finding flow? Finding flow. What does it for you? Huh. Um, Making love. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 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 hey. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. That might not make his show. <laughs> <laughs> it might make the show. <laughs> That's what we should call it, making the show. <laughs> that I agree. Ooh, I'm telling you. I'm, I have a feeling when we make this show, I will find my flow. I feel like that <laughs> is when it's really going to come to fruition. It's going to be fruition. Yeah. I don't have to audition, do I? <laughs> you just have to make No, you just got to send us a self-tape. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> self-taping is when I really find my flow. And make, is and make is it? It's, it's putting it all together. Okay, so who's going to play you in a movie? If it wasn't you, who would play you in a movie? That's a great question. Are you asking me? I am asking you, Rob. Well, I'd like to offer the role to both of you. <laughs> and each time the camera cuts back to the other person in the scene, it will cut back to one of you. And it will oscillate. Um, no, but kidding aside, I don't know, Hulk Hogan maybe? Um, you, you mean other than Brad Pitt? Yeah, not a fan, uh, not a fan, just kidding. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's such a hard question. It is, isn't it? Like the way I see myself is like, you know, I don't know how you see me or you see, like we all see each other so differently, differently, you know. Totally. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah, I know. It's very we, interesting. Like who, who, who do you think would play me in my movie? I know we just met, but. <laughs> Other than Brad Pitt? Other than Brad Pitt. Uh, Hulk Hogan for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, young Hulk Hogan, like hunky, hunky Hogan, <laughs> like really young. Hunky Hogan? Hogan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, or like Randy Travis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so evidently oh, not go. Randy Travis. Jason, like, Jason Momoa. Hey! hey. 
I had a little Tell help. Tell you the truth, with this hair, I mean, I, I'm, almost, I'm almost getting there. Oh. You got to take your shirt off for us to really understand. Right? Now, why that. were you I, hiding that? I just this caught whole wind time. that there's a barber shop like literally right behind us, and I think I might just uh, embarrassingly walk over there right after this and cut it off. Why it's were you hiding that the whole time? I had no idea. There it is. Look at that. There it is. Very. Yeah, your shirt's <laughs> too high, man. <laughs> she <laughs> said much better. Like, come on, man. <laughs> okay, last hey. question. Last question. Better compliment, and I want all of you three to answer this, please. Better compliment. I love your music, or I love your movies. Why would you do that? <laughs> I know. I get rude. Paid, I get paid the I mean, big bucks for the hard questions, your, friends. Your questions are so befuddling. <laughs> like they, they make my face hurt. Like yeah, this is like Thank 60 you. minutes with laughter. Listen, you didn't know. You didn't know what you were in for, did you? Yeah. So, oh, I love your music, or I love your movies. I, I'd say music. If someone says that, you know, music would make me be like, oh, that's so wild. You found my music. Right. Because I don't have a ton of like Spotify listeners or something. You have like 120,000 monthly listeners on your Spotify. Did you know Man, that? Man, it, I, <laughs> I, Did I you don't. Know that? You know that. Yeah, you get the nickels they send you, right? <laughs> Here's a $1.73. <laughs> yeah, I bought a latte this morning. Yeah. <laughs> right. You bought a coffee with it? I had oat milk in it too. Yeah. Well, that's like. Four dollars. There was an upcharge. Seven dollars. <laughs> but I went for it. No, I, when someone finds my music, it quite often it's through TV and film, to be fair. Um, but it means a lot when they say that a song has got them through something. And, you know, some people watch movies hundreds of times, too, and I know it gets them through something. But I feel like music, I'm doing a better service. When someone says, I love your music, I'm like, they're probably, they could be out walking <laughs> in the, or in their car or yeah. up to stuff. Yeah. But they're like, I've watched. Or making movie. love. Or making love. <laughs> Great call that. But, but when I, if someone says I've watched a movie a hundred times, I feel a little guilty. I'm like, you should probably get outside more and uh, <laughs> like maybe grab my CD and go for a run. I don't know. <laughs> like with someone, I feel a bit healthier when someone says I love your music. I don't know. Okay. Your questions are tough. <laughs> Wes, I'm making it up. Movies or music? Movies, because all my music is in all the movies. <laughs> Good point. See how I got around that? See what I did there? Was it your original music? That was movie? very, very... It's about to be. No, and also, these guys have actually been uh, uh, professional musicians for a lot longer than I have. This is, I still feel like I'm a baby in this. Like My first Christmas jazz EP just came out last year, so... That's my Spotify is only in December as of right now, um, but then that'll be changing eventually. I but, heard your so. Christmas song that, that sounds really good. Thanks, man. Yeah, I heard it. I well, see, now, he, now that made me feel really good, so I want to change my answer now. <laughs> <laughs> I love your music. And I wrote that one, so if he didn't like it, well, that's my fault, too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. All right, Rob, music or movies? I mean, hands down, music, um, especially when it's something that, that I've written solo. Um, not that I want to take credit for it, but if somebody, if it, if it responds, if someone responds to something that I wrote myself and it's true, you know, then it's a reflection of me, like unabashedly for better or worse. And, you know, not that we're all seeking acceptance, but let's be honest, we are. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really comforting thing to, 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 to be seen and heard. Mm. I agree. Well, I think that's what all of us want, right? Just to know that we've, we've been seen. And you guys have been seen today. Thank you. Thank you mm. for being a part of this. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're, Sorry you're I really, was late. You're really, you're really good at this, by the way. Thanks. Like, I've never had to work so hard to find an answer in my life. My work here is done. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> thank you, thank One you, thank you. One more round of applause. Rob Mays. Thank you, guys. Paul Green, Wes Brown. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And if you guys want to, pull out your cameras real quick, and I'm going to make them all stand up here, because I know you were trying to take pictures earlier. So stand next to each other and act like you Who love did each the other. Best? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Ask you the tough questions. Oh, thank you. There you go. 
Okay, do the look and laugh. Look at each other and laugh. That's perfect. To the left. Thank you guys so much for being here. You guys are amazing. Love talking to all of you. I've made new friends now. And thank you guys. You're awesome. All right. Have a good one. We'll see you soon.